In 1918, healthcare around the world was very different when the Spanish flu spread across the globe and killed more than 50 million people. Back then, most doctors either worked for themselves or were funded by charities or the church. The poor and the working class had little or no access to any type of healthcare. But this wasn't the case for the privileged who did. And for many who belonged to the upper class, as far as they were concerned, if the lower classes became sick and died from the Spanish flu, they got what they deserved. But truth be told, the reason lower classes were so hard hit by the disease was because of their crowded living conditions, long working hours, and poor diet. When the three waves of the Spanish flu hit in 1918 and in the beginning of 1919, it did not discriminate. The less well-off suffered the most. But the upper class were also not spared. After this devastating catastrophe, health authorities around the industrialized world realized that an individual, regardless of their status, could not be blamed for catching an infectious disease. Armed with this insight and the full recognition of epidemiology as a science that studies disease patterns, causes and effects, countries began creating or overhauling their health ministries in the 1920s. The establishment of Canada's Federal Department of Health in 1919 was a direct result of the Spanish flu epidemic. Its first minister of health was Newton Wesley Rowell. With this public health revolution sweeping different parts of the world, an International Bureau for Fighting Pandemics was also established in 1919 in Vienna, Austria. The forerunner of today's World Health Organization.